First of all, we have established <coughs> through the Word of God that God is a spirit. And because He is a spirit, you know, the questions I have put to you is the fact that which is more real, the spirit or the natural? If you were created by a spirit being, would you not think that the spiritual realm is more real than the natural? Although we walk around in the natural, we see the natural, but quite frankly, the spiritual realm is more real. Why? Because it created us. It is a much higher dominion than what we are. Okay. The Word of God is our window, if you like, into that unseen spiritual realm that God sees. In other words, when you read the Word of God, you're reading the only truth that there is. And you're in reality, you're looking through the window into the spirit realm through the Word of God and seeing things how they really are and how God, in other words, how God perceives them and how God sees them. And the reason for that is that the Word of God is the only truth. His Word is the only truth. It is the truth and it is, the, again, the only truth. The, uh, our enemy is not the people around us nor is it circumstances that come our way. For instance, if you walk into church and you have a squabble going on, it's not this person or that person. It's the enemy. It's the enemy badgering you on. Nor is it God, as in, as in past teachings from some uh, denominations. God is a liberal giver of all good things. Nothing bad from him, I'll tell you. Also, the forces that come against us are, because they are in the spiritual realm, they are unseen, a fact that Satan uses to convince us that, and to convince all of us that he doesn't really exist. You'd be surprised the people that think that Satan does not exist. And my question for that is, is if that's the case, then why are you a Christian? Why are you a Christian? if Satan does not exist. Why worry about it? You say, also through the Word of God, we have learned that Satan was an archangel of extreme beauty and with pride and, and, and iniquity was found in him or sin. He was cast from heaven along with a third of his angels who are his army that does his bidding upon the earth. When he was cast out of heaven, there was a big war that went on and he was cast down to the earth along with one-third of the angels, which are his army. Paul, during his, in his teachings, teach us and show us that as Paul has called him the God of this world and the prince and the power of the air. Jesus called him the prince of this world. And you, now you, you all have these scriptures. It is with these invisible powers that we struggle with in this world. That's where the struggle comes from. And the quicker you get a revelation of that, the quicker you'll realize it. That's what you struggle with. You don't struggle with people. You don't struggle with uh, circumstances. You don't struggle with God. You struggle with the enemy. That is his purpose. Satan blinds believers. He blinds unbelievers to the truth of God. What is the truth of God? The Word of God. He blinds unbelievers to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are extremely blinded to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Satan also defames God's character. In John 10, 10, Jesus said, Satan comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. And I have come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. So if you're not having life and having it more abundantly, Satan is stealing your ground. It's that simple. If you're not having life, and if you're not having it more abundantly, Satan is stealing your ground. I'm going to show you this evening how he steals it. First of all, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 14.
How art, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? By the way, this is the King James I use. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan was telling that to Almighty God. What was he trying to do? What was Satan trying to do in heaven? He tried to exalt himself above God. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will sit also up upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. He was trying to uh, exalt himself above God. In verse 15, you see there where God says, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of the pit. They that look, see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? That's how much of a liar and a deceiver he is. And again, what you have there is you have good versus evil. You have lies versus the truth. You have the enemy versus the Word of God. So, in chapter 10. In chapter 10. Beginning in verse 1. Now, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with you, with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. In other words, though we walk in this body, we do not war after in this body. In other words, though we walk in the natural, we do not war in the natural. Why? Because it's a spiritual battle. Though we walk in the natural or in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh or in the natural. Why? Because it's a spiritual battle. Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What's carnal mean? Fleshy. They are not fleshy, but mighty in the Spirit. They're mighty through God, through God, to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There's Satan's strategy right there. Now I'm going to go through it with you. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Our weapons of our warfare, we'll be covering weapons, weapons next week, are not carnal, not fleshy, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. Now, <laughs> verse 5, I want to read to you also from the Amplified, then we're going to break it down. What did I say? First Corinthians? Second Corinthians. Beginning in verse 4, now this is in the Amplified. Let's begin in verse 3. For though we walk, in other words, live in the flesh, we are not carrying on our warfare according to the flesh and using mere human weapons. 
So we are not war warring in the flesh using mere human weapons. Weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical. In other words, weapons of flesh and blood. But they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Now, verse 5. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ. What's he saying there? Verse 5. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing... It sups itself up against the, the true knowledge of God. What is the true knowledge of God? The Word of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, Satan comes to your mind. Where is the battlefield? It is in your mind. My dear people, and that's the only place it's at. It is in your mind. Verse 5 in the King James, for instance. <clears throat> Casting down imaginations. That word imaginations in the Hebrew means reasonings. 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 And every high thing, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In other words, every high thing that exalts itself against what? The Word of God. What exalts itself against the Word of God? Satan. Satan exalts himself against the Word of God in your mind. How does he do that? Very simple. He says, you're sick. The Word of God says, no, you're not. But if you listen to him, he's exalted himself above the word of God. It's that simple. Satan comes to you and says, you're poor. God says, word, God's word says, you're rich. Depends who you listen to. You understand? So, if you have a sickness and disease, for instance, and you keep listening to that voice telling you, oh, I am so sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Because the Word of God says you're not sick. You're well. You've been healed by the blood of the Lamb. You have been healed. You have been healed. You have been healed. The battleground is the mind. Again, verse 5, casting down imaginations. So what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to cast them down. You are supposed to cast them down. See, if you look in verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not fleshy, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Where's a stronghold at? It's in your mind. That's the stronghold. The Bible talks about strongholds. You see a, you see a brick wall around you? It's in your mind. Satan builds this stronghold called around you in your mind brick by brick. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. The Word of God says, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. It's always opposite. It's always negative. You have a negative thought? It's not from God. And that's how I build strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Casting down reasonings. Casting down thoughts. 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 That are not of God. That do not pertain to the Word of God. Casting down imaginations. 
thoughts, reasonings. Casting down thoughts, reasonings, imaginations. That and every high thing that exalts itself against the word of God or the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What's that mean? Every thought to the obedience of Christ, to the obedience of the word. Was not Christ the word made flesh? So, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Word of God. My dear people, that's how it works. Not so hard, is it? It's a, it's a matter of renewing your mind. Exactly what the Bible talks about. You must renew your mind to the Word of God. Now, if a person sits around and worries, we have, have we all done it? I don't do it anymore. But you, does anybody know what worry is? It's meditation from the devil. It's meditation from the enemy. It's meditation from the enemy. Because the Word of God purely, uh, clearly instructs us to meditate day and night in the Word of God. Which is reverse, isn't it? It's always opposite. You ever notice, well, I don't care what you worry about, it never does you any good? Huh? Might keep you up at night. Doesn't do it a bit of good. Doesn't accomplish one thing. Why? There's no fruit in it. So... <clears throat> Turn with me, please, to Joshua, chapter 1. Chapter 1. Beginning in verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. What God is saying there, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now go there, go therefore, arise. Arise, go over this barrier. Go over the barrier, all this people, unto the land which I do give them, because Jesus has already bought and paid for it, even to the children of God. You with me? Arise, go over the barriers all this people into the land which I do give them that Jesus has already bought and paid for. Jesus has already bought and paid for this land. Great Britain has been bought and paid for by the blood of the Lamb. And the reason you don't see a church on every street corner is because we listen to the devil. And we don't take back the land that's been stolen. Verse 2. <clears throat> every place that the sole of your foot, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. Where have you heard that before? Tread upon? That have I given unto you as I said unto Moses, every place that the sole of your foot, in other words, every place that you walk, that you tread upon the enemy, you've got back the land. You see, we already have the victory. Jesus has already paid the price. From the wilderness and Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. God here is saying, this land is yours coast to coast, north to south, the east to the west. All you got to do is tread upon the enemies and take back your land. 
Take back the land that Jesus has bought and paid for. Verse 5. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage. And unto this people shalt thou defy, divide for an inheritance the land. Now, when God talks about land in the Bible, He's talking about anything that belongs to you. Your home, your family, your children your possessions, and your town, your city, your country. Anything that belongs to you is your land. Be strong and of good courage, for unto the people shalt thou, shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land. You've already inherited the land through the blood of Jesus Christ. But the enemy tries to steal it, just like these big storms you've had. They tried, what did it do? I heard John say that day he was out to his house. They, 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 some of the beach is gone. And, it, and when he said it, he said, oh, some of the land's gone. Have you noticed that? 50-foot waves. Did you know that they had an earthquake this last week in Stoke on Kent? It was on the news this morning. 2.2. But have you ever had an earthquake in this country before? Huh? I've heard that before. That's Stoke. Yeah. Time is short. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 7. <laughs> Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to the law. What is the law? The Word of God. The Word of God. Verse 8. This book of the law, in other words, this word shall not depart out of thy mouth in other words, it should be in your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. To do all that is written therein. You want to know what you're supposed to do? Right here it is. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Where? Where? Against the enemy. Against the enemy. You'll be prosperous and have good success. The enemy is the one that keeps you uh, grabbing this and grabbing that. So you meditate on that word day and night and take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ or to the obedience of the word of God. Verse 9. Have I... Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee... This is a command, people. A command. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whether thou goest. The whole nation of Israel stand back looking at him. Why? How, how could David step out uh, uh, in front of the whole nation of Israel, and here's this great big Goliath, I don't know if you studied it, but Goliath's armor weighed 700 pounds. That's how big he was. And uh, uh, the king of Israel, his armor weighed 250 pounds. They tried to put it on David, and David could... He just went like this because he's just a little bitty guy. You know, just a kid. But all the whole nation, that whole nation, said, Ooh, I can't fight that. Ooh. Look. Look. Look at the giants in the land. And here's David says, I cast down every vain imagination and every reasoning, and I take thought every, every I take captive every thought to the obedience to the word of God. I'll smite him. And out he went. And he did. And he did. See, Satan hasn't changed a bit. The battlefield is in the mind. And God instructs us to cross over the barriers. 
to cross over the barriers and to cast down those vain imaginations, those vain reasonings, and go on. We are instructed through the Word of God to be like-minded, like Christ. Be like-minded, like Christ. What does that mean? That means to cast down vain imaginations and to to conform and renew your mind to the Word of God. To the Word of God. Do what the Word says. Act what the Word says. Live it. Breathe it. As Christians, have we not been given that same commission? Have we not been given that same uh, to go forth, to, to preach the gospel, to lay hands on the sick, and to set the captives free? You see, we as Christians hold the keys to the kingdom of God. We hold in our... In our it's like a key. We hold in our hand the problems of the world. The solution to the problems. The solution to the sickness. The solutions to the disease. We have the keys to the kingdom. That's what Jesus hung on the cross about. And he says, here, I give it to you. And you know what we do as Christians? I don't want it. I don't want it. Now I'm going to really shock you. <clears throat> Turn with me too. Well, first of all, in Luke 17, 21, it says, Jesus said, For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 21, write that down. It, Jesus said, that, For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now turn with me. We're in Luke to 13. Luke 13. 13. Everybody got it? Beginning in verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. What's infirmity? Well, it's translated two ways. It's translated inability or sickness. But mostly it's translated inabilities. Now, this woman who had the spirit of infirmity for 18 years was bowed together and could not in no wise lift herself up. It's all like this. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now, I'm going to come back to that in just a second. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There were six days in which men ought to work in them, but therefore come to be healed and not on the Sabbath. In other words, here come all the religious leaders. Here come all the religious leaders. Don't set that woman free. It's Sunday. <laughs> A religious leader is, 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 is the traditions of men. They go, by, they go by denominations and traditions and not the Word of God. Not the Word of God. That's what the religious leaders do. That's the reason why it was the religious leaders that put Jesus Christ on the cross. They didn't even...